Hi everyone, it's me. As a foreigner living in the UK, I asked you guys, expats and locals alike, why do you love the UK? And I got so many responses. So today we are going to share our love for the UK and without further ado, let's go. First up, we have accents. I love the many different accents in such a small country. Honestly, I couldn't agree more. As a Canadian, we have a massive country, but we have very small accent variances. Does that make sense? Here in the UK, you can take the train for, you know, 20 minutes. 20 minutes down the line, you're in a new town, and guess what? The accent is different. It's awesome. This one really spoke to me. The cheese. <laughs> Yes. Now, one thing that a lot of people touched on was the countryside. Countryside, walkable countryside, walkable towns as well, which is a personal favorite of mine. The amount of public right of ways and public hikes and just the ability to be able to go out there and just explore the UK. I love it. I absolutely agree. Another popular response of why you guys love the UK and honestly, it's near and dear to my heart, is the food. <laughs> so we've got the food, we've got the sheer variety and quality of biscuits and crisps. Yes, absolutely. How about the food and the beer? A whole aisle in supermarkets devoted to crisps. Also, Greg's. Yorkshire puddings, sausage rolls. My girl Anna said roast dinners. Absolutely love a roast dinner. And actually, if we can tie in a couple, I personally love the countryside. Going for a walk through a public right of way in the countryside, ending up at a pub and having a roast dinner. Is there anything better? Peter said, I love how green it is, how much nature we preserve, our history, the people. The green really jumped out at me because I totally agree with this as well. Now, Canada is a beautiful country, <laughs> don't get me wrong. And we're very big and we're very vast and we have all sorts of different landscapes. But I find growing up in Southern Ontario, the winter time was gray and then it's white. And then actually it goes brown because the snow ends up being dirty and it's like filled with dirt and like gross stuff and it turns brown. <laughs> Wonderful. Here in the UK, I find even though the winters can be cold and rainy and dark, it's still very green. So while sometimes I complain about the rain, <laughs> the rain actually keeps the UK very, very green and it is green year round, which is honestly awesome. Now, another really popular response that you guys said was the history. <laughs> so many people said the history in some form or another. Phoenix said old culture and new culture in the same place. Beautiful landscapes, tea. I agree with all of it. We also have beautiful architecture, history, walkable towns, charming homes. History, culture, and yes, Shakespeare. <laughs> the history, traditions, culture, diversity, countryside, people. The history, love seeing historical buildings everywhere. I feel like I'm in a book. And this is a reaction that I know personally a lot of Canadians and Americans feel. I was at a tea house recently in this beautiful historic building in a beautiful historic town. Um, there was history everywhere. The architecture is absolutely gorgeous. And we were talking about how a lot of the British people in their day-to-day -day life don't see it. And that's not anything wrong with you guys. It's just, you are around it your entire life. You don't actually see it as much anymore. But I know for me and a lot of other Canadians and Americans that I have met, we are always like shocked to see this kind of stuff. And it is something that even though I've lived here for seven years, I never want to take it for granted because there's history absolutely everywhere. History in abundance, history, and that they have kept old buildings. I mean, we could be here all day. The history and the architecture is something that is just very special. And it's something that is very much a part of everyday life. As a Canadian, if I wanted to go see something really historic, something really old, something really well preserved, I would have to like take a holiday. Do you know what I mean? Like I can't just go to a local cafe and see it because it's not part of my day-to-day -day life in Canada, in Ontario, you have to make a point to go see that stuff. Now, another very popular response. <laughs> Can you guess what it is? 
Humor, of course. Loads of people said humor. I love the sense of humor of Brits. Sense of humor during adversity. Our sense of humor. Self-deprecating humor. Dry humor. People have banter. We, again, could be here all day. There is something about the British sense of humor. I really appreciate it. It is very close to Canadians. Um, we come, you know, we have a lot of shared history, obviously, but there's something about the British sense of humor that's just, just a bit more, do you know what I mean? And I love it. And with that, actually, I didn't see anybody say this. I'm sure some people did. Honestly, I had hundreds of responses. I could only pick so many. But one thing that I didn't see too much were TV shows. And I will say that the UK has some of the funniest TV shows ever created. So many of them too. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by a really cool app. Honestly, I love it. It's called Blinkist. Have you tried it? Now Blinkist is an app that helps you understand the most important parts, the key points from over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts. I don't know about you, <laughs> But for me in 2023, I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to expand my knowledge. But to be completely honest, <laughs> the idea of opening a nonfiction book, I don't know, 300 pages, I just can't. Now with Blinkist, I can pick that nonfiction book that I really wanna read. I can listen to the key points, the most important bits in 15 minutes. So I've actually listened to a bunch already, but one that stood out for me was called Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Julie Smith. I loved it. I loved that there were so many bite-sized, actionable advice for a variety of difficulties that we all face. Anxiety, depression, just in this perfect bite-sized format. And I learned all of that while walking to the gym which I was gonna do anyway. However, if you want something a little more British, I did also listen to Notes from a Small Island, an affectionate portrait of Britain. They also have a really cool feature called Blinkist Connect. So if you have a premium subscription, you can share it with one other person. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it doesn't cost them anything extra. So it's really a membership two for one. If that interests you, you can get 25% off Blinkist Premium and enjoy two memberships for the price of one. You can get started with a seven day free trial with my link in the description. Honestly, I think it's really cool. I've really enjoyed it. So if you're looking to learn more about whatever category or topic that you're interested in, but are just having a hard time like getting started or having the motivation to read a 200 page book, I would really give it a try because I've learned so much already and it's, and it's enjoyable. The narrations that I've heard so far are so engaging and fun and I just, I've loved it. So if you want to give it a go, my link is in the description, but let's get back to my video. Ollie says, our unique sense of the English language, platy jubes. <laughs> Ollie, I totally get what you're saying. I also hate it. <laughs> I hate platy tubes. <laughs> There's so many of them. There's a new one too. I heard the other day about the cost of living crisis. Have you heard this? I don't even really want to say it out loud. I saw it on TikTok. Um, but in the same vein as platy tubes, we have cozy lives, as in the cost of living crisis. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> but Ollie, you're absolutely correct. A couple of people also said the music. Um, again, absolutely agree. I think some of the best bands and musical groups have come out of the UK. There's certainly no shortage of musical talent in the UK, I'll say that. A couple of people also said the NHS. Again, I agree. Now, is the NHS perfect? Absolutely not. No, it's not. I don't think anyone's gonna say it's perfect. However, it is something to be proud of and also supported and protected. I will say as a personal experience, I was so sick over Christmas. Unfortunately, the worst two days were the two days that the GP was closed for Christmas and like the bank holidays and stuff. I will say though, my partner called my GP um, the one morning that they were open, said like, I think she needs antibiotics. And I did get an appointment like two hours later. 
I was able to go in, see somebody, get assessed, get that prescription, come home and get better. So I will say that was my experience over Christmas, which Christmas is always like the worst time to go to the GP and they took good care of me. So just my, just my little personal story. One response that was really cool comes from Bo. They said, having lived in several countries, to me, this is one of the most orderly and structured countries I've been to. Yes, it's not perfect, but it's the closest to sanity that I can get. Also love how multicultural the country is, good labor and employment laws too. I found this really interesting because I think when you live in a different country, you do gain a different type of perspective, right? Like if you're a British person watching this and you've only ever lived in the UK, like this is all that you know, of course, perhaps you've done a lot of traveling, but traveling is very different to actually living and working someplace. I find working really is an eye opener when you work in a different country. So that's why I thought Bo's comment about, you know, having lived in a variety of different countries that really gives you a, a bigger perspective, like, to experience the way other countries do it and be able to compare it amongst themselves, I think is pretty cool. Now, another popular response, and sometimes it's hard to tell if the Brits are saying this or the foreigners are saying it, but it is the people. My wife is Hungarian and she says, the people are just so friendly. I will say my experience, again, it's been pretty positive. That's not gonna be everybody's experience, of course, um, and that's not to say that everybody is perfect, obviously not. But I do find that on the whole, uh, on the average, on the majority, people are very friendly and very kind and very polite and just nice, funny people. <laughs> They're good people. And I'm not just saying that so the Brits don't get mad at me. Now, another reason why people love the UK, we kind of touched on it already. And that of course is the pub. A couple of people said the pub or the cider or the beer or even just like the pub culture. And if you've watched any of my videos, then you probably know I absolutely agree. I love it. There is something so cozy again about going to a pub. Maybe you're there for a pint. Maybe you're there for a roast dinner. Why not both? And I hope that it is like a historical looking pub. Maybe it's got a big fire. It's got wooden beams. You know, again, you're surrounded by history. You're surrounded by good food with good pints, with good people. It's just wonderful. Now I do find the expat perspective quite interesting because of course we can come from a variety of different countries with different experiences. This particular one said, practically no insecurity compared to my home country, better economy too. Another response was because I have a lot of freedom here and I love British culture. Again, I think when you live in multiple countries, you have that perspective, you have that fr frame of reference to be able to compare. Um, and yeah, it's just, it feels nice when people do come to the UK and they find, you know what, actually, like this is the place for me. It's a nice feeling. This response I love. <laughs> Can I just say 10 out of 10, I do agree. Public transport and next day delivery. We did have a couple of people mention tea, of course. This one I thought was pretty funny. Even in a major crisis, someone will always go, tea or everything can be resolved with a cup of tea. Now this comment from Eugene, I thought was really interesting. The sheer variation. We've got an enormous amount of variation in landscapes, architecture, dialects, food stuff, and so much else. All in a country that's about a third of the size of Texas. One thing that some people love about the UK, the weather. <laughs> How about the culture, the architecture, the people, the food, basically everything. Scenery, architecture, music, TV, comedy, sports, history, humor, NHS, ceremony, traditions, winter foods, roast dinners, fish and chips, steak and pit kidney pies. Again, totally agree. Entertainment, like theater, they have it. Sports, they have it. Nature, yes, go enjoy. Always something to do and most things accessible with public transit. Our girl Charla says, the food, the friendly people, the countryside views, the historic homes and castles, the laid back vibes. On this channel, of course, I talk about my opinions and my experiences, but having read through so many of your responses, and honestly, there were hundreds, it just kind of like reignites a real love and a real sense of like, I feel grateful 
to live here. Thank you so much to everybody who sent responses. If you would like to watch a bit more content about the UK, why not check out this one? You know you're British when. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.